Hello, today we're going to talk about rules of inference. In, in fact, doing formal proofs using rules of inference. Now, I know that the table can be daunting, especially if you're trying to start there. So instead, I'm going to give you a visual way of, of finding true things and combining them to try to get what you want. So let's take these four premises, and what we want to do is show that they imply this conclusion. So I have P and T implies R or S. Then I have Q implies U and T. U implies P and not S. So I want to figure out what true things can I get from each of these, and I'm going to use a few tricks. First, I'm going to start from one premise at a time and go as far as I can, learning as much as I can from each premise. Second, whenever I see a conditional, I'm going to consider what the logical equivalent statement without the conditional is, and vice versa. If I can do that, I will do it. And that gives me the most amount of true things that I can know about at any time. So let's start with our first premise. So by using a logical equivalence of conditionals, I see that I have not PNT or RRS. I don't like having nots in front. That's not a very simple thing. So I'm going to use De Morgan's law to find another logically equivalent statement by putting this not through here and flipping the and to an or. So here I've applied De Morgan's law from this statement to this statement. Observe that as I do this, I'm keeping, I'm making boxes for all my true statements, and I'm drawing arrows from saying the reason I know this is true is because I started with this rule. So if I have this true, I use this equivalence to find this. Okay? And that's how I'm going to continue. So I'll start with my next premise, Q implies U and T, and start going there. If I start with my logical equivalence of conditionals, I see I have not Q or U and T, and I see that I have an or and an and, which means I want to distribute to see what this turns out to be. From there I see I have not Q or U, and not Q or T. And now I have a statement where an and is the first operation, it's the primary operation, which means that I have this is true and this is true using the simplification. So I have these two true statements, and I see that I have a not and an or, which means you want to use logical equivalence of conditionals to see what they mean there. So now I see I have Q implies U and Q implies T, and I have this set of ors up here. Now what I want to do is I want to start connecting things together. And I see that I have a U implies P here, and I see I have Q implies U. Well those things together, if Q implies U and U implies P, that means Q implies P by hypothetical syllogism. Okay. I haven't used this premise yet, this not S yet, and the only other time I see S being used, and my most recent thing is here. I have this big OR statement, and I know that S is false, so this S doesn't help my OR statement. So I can use disjunctive syllogism to combine them. I'll use a different color to get from over there. Now I've seen this true statement, and I want to, I want to try to combine it with something else. Well, I see I have this P here, and I have a Q implies P. These are kind of the end chains of my facts. Q implies P, I also have Q implies T, and I and so forth. I want to take this statement and think of the not P or not T or R, and I want to consider this to be a, a conditional statement. So now I have a conditional P implies not T or R, and I have the conditional Q implies P. Therefore, Q implies not T or R using hypothetical syllogism. Now, again, let's look at the things that don't have arrows out of them. I have Q implies not T or R, and I have Q implies T. Now I'm trying to get the Q implies R. Now, if we think about it informally, what I have is that if Q is true, then T is true. And also, if Q is true, then either not T or R. But I know that when Q is true, not T is false. So then R needs to be true. Well, let's try to formalize this using rules of inference. And the nice trick to do is to use logical equivalence of conditionals to get into ors and nots. So using logical equivalence of conditionals twice, I started from Q implies T to get not Q or T. And then I started from Q implies not T or R to get not Q or not T or R. When I see these two OR statements, I see that they both have a Q, but they're both not. They're knotted in both of them. But they also both have a T, and one is with T being true, and the other one's T being false. When I see OR statements using the same variable except with different negations, that means I can use resolution. So let's use resolution. So now I've used resolution from these two statements, thinking of this as being T or not Q, and not T or not Q or R. 
and I get this statement here. Now I see that I have not Q or not Q or R. Well, I have an equivalence called the idempotent laws that this not Q or not Q becomes just not Q. So by the idempotent law, I can see I get these not Q or not Q turns into not Q. And then not Q or R I see is equivalent to my conclusion using logical equivalence of conditionals. So now I have this big, mazy mess. This is not an acceptable way to turn in your solution. However, it's a map of things just saying, okay, here's what I got from one fact to another. They're kind of out of order, they're kind of all over the place, but the important thing is when I want, what I want is I eventually want to write down Q implies R as a true statement. But before I can do that, I need not Q or R as a true statement. Before I can do that, I need this statement. Before I can do that, I need both of these statements. And so the idea is that I need to find an ordering of my true statements such that everything that's supposed to come before does. So one way I can do it is I can count the number of statements and then know that this is going to be my last one and then go back from there. All right, I've counted twice just to be sure I've got 21 statements, which means that this is going to be the 21st statement. So if I go back, this is the most recent thing I need, so this is going to be the 22nd statement. I can go back, I'm oh, sorry, the, 20, the 20th statement. If I go back again, the 19th statement. And, I'm, and now I have two possible things, so let's make them be, say, the 18th and 17th statements. They don't have an arrow between them, so that's fine. And now I want to go back and make sure I have all of my statements before I can continue. And uh, you can have, there's, this is where I can start making choices in my order. But the important thing is just that the rest, the things that have come before do come before. So I'm just going to start filling in numbers. Now I've numbered all of my statements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start actually writing the actual full proof using this numbering. I've now completed the proof. It's a pretty long one, it's got lots of stuff in it, but let's go through it really quickly just so we see where we're starting from. I start with my premise that P and T implies R or S. I use a logical equivalence to get rid of that conditional, put an OR in there with a NOT. I want to get rid of that NOT, so I use De Morgan's to see I have NOT P or NOT T or R or S. Then I'm going to stop from there. I'm going to start with my premise that U implies P, my premise that NOT S is true, my premise is that Q implies U, A, and T. Now I'm going to continue from here, I see I'm going to take this conditional out, using logical equivalence of condition, um, of conditionals. And then I'm going to see I have an or and an and, I'm going to distribute, and then I'm going to simplify the left-hand side to see not Q or U is true, and get my logical equivalence of conditionals, Q implies U. And I see that Q implies U and U implies P, so I'm going to see that Q implies P by hypothetical, hypothetical syllogism. Not Q or T is uh, true by simplification of this statement over here. And then I see that that's equivalent to Q implies T. I also see that not P or not T or R is true. It's disjunctive syllogism from the fact that I have not S and I have not P or not T or R or S. So this is very far away from these two things, but that's just because of the order I chose. Maybe a better design would be to have them closer together. Then I see that that's equivalent to P implies not T or R, but Q implies P, so I see that Q implies not T or R. And I make a logical equivalent, uh, and then if I say, I see Q implies T, I see not Q or T. Notice I actually have a duplicate statement here. And that was an error in my drawing. I could have actually ignored the Q implies T. I didn't need it. Just focus on this not Q and, and or T because I need it here. But if I look at 16 and take my logical equivalence of conditions, I see not Q or not T or R. Then I have my two ors where I have a T and a not T. By resolution, I get not Q or not Q or R, not Q or not Q or R, and from that I can uh, use idempotent law to see I have not Q or R and logical equivalence of conditionals to get Q implies R. So step through this a little bit yourself and play around with this idea, the idea that you want to visually search for true statements you can make out of the true statements you already know, 
and then you're going to use that picture to actually get you into the table form you see here.